does this American business this marketing executive have in common? We're both instrumental in getting this man elected President of the United States. What they did, they did 20 seconds at a time. Join us as we take a look at the 22nd Prez in this edition of Prez Politics. It's 1952, and President Harry Truman has announced he's not running for re-election. The Democrats in 1952 end up selecting Governor Adlai Stevenson from Illinois to be their candidate. Dwight Eisenhower was finally persuaded by the Republicans to be their candidate for president. Now Eisenhower had a lot of things going for him. He had name recognition. He was a supreme commander of all Allied forces during World War II. He was popular. And the best thing was, he wasn't a career politician. Now the problem the Eisenhower campaign had to deal with was the fact that Eisenhower oftentimes came across as stiff and awkward. And so the campaign wanted to figure out two things. How can we make him look more presidential and how can we get him to connect with voters, with the common man, understanding the issues of the day. I mean some of the issues of the day were the Korean War. The Korean War was still going on and dragging out. There was some corruption and scandals in Washington DC and also there was economic issues. Finally the decision was made to use TV as a marketing tool to try and boost Eisenhower's image in this campaign of 1952. By 1952 there were about 17 million TVs uh, that were owned by households in the United States and that number was only continuing to grow. If you walk inside the entrance of the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney today, you'll notice a bench statue just inside of Town Square. Now it shows a man sitting on a bench, and next to him is Minnie Mouse. Now the man of the statue ended up playing a pretty influential role in the election of 1952, particularly with Dwight Eisenhower, really in a way that most people don't realize. Now, <laughs> it's not who you think it is. It's actually Roy Disney the older brother of Walt Disney. You see, in 1952, Dwight Eisenhower was the first presidential candidate to air a TV commercial, a campaign ad. And it was created, this first one he ran, was created by Roy Disney. See, it was entitled, We'll Take Ike to Washington. And it has a very upbeat, catchy jingle to it. It has a lot of repetition, imagery, lots of symbolism. It shows Uncle Sam uh, wearing an Ike button, uh, leading a parade of citizens to Washington, D.C. And at the end of that commercial, uh, a sun rises up behind the United States Capitol and it says Ike. Here's a little snippet of that campaign commercial made by the Walt Disney Company for Eisenhower in 1952. Ike for president, Ike for president, Ike for president, Ike for president. You like Ike, I like Ike, everybody likes Ike for president. Hang out the banner and beat the drum, we'll take Ike to Washington. Hang out the banner and beat the drum, we'll take Ike to Washington. We get where we are going, travel day and night for president. Let Adelaide go the other way, we'll all go with Ike. You like Ike, I like Ike, everybody likes Ike for president. Hang out the banner and beat the drum. Stevenson ran some TV ads of his own. They certainly weren't the same draw as Eisenhower's ads, in my opinion. Here's a little snippet of one of them. It's called, I Love the Gov. I'd rather have a man with a hole in his shoe than a hole in everything he says. I'd rather have a man who knows what to do when he gets to be the press. I love the gov, the governor of Illinois. He is the gov that brings the dove of peace and joy. You can see how boring that one was. The Eisenhower campaign took it even a step further in trying to enhance Ike's image on television by hiring a legendary marketing executive from Madison Avenue. His name was Rosser Reeves. He was 42 years old. He was a master of selling household products uh, on television. 
And interestingly enough, he's also the one that coined the phrase for M&Ms that says, it melts in your mouth, not in your hands. Well, Rosser Reeves brought Eisenhower to Manhattan for a full day of filming for this TV package. And he brought some average voters in, had them reading off and asking the candidate questions. And then Eisenhower was filmed separately, reading responses to those questions. And you can tell if, as you watch part of it, you could tell that Eisenhower was reading his cue cards. But they, they, they spliced it together and they made it look like a man on the street type of questioning. This package that was put together was called Eisenhower Answers Americans. And 25 commercials uh, for radio and TV came out of that one day of filming. And they created a bunch of uh, one minute spots for radio and TV and a bunch of 20 second spots for radio and TV. And of course, those 20 second spots were much cheaper to air on radio and TV. Rosser Reeves and the Eisenhower campaign ended up making a brilliant move, in my opinion. They bought a bunch of 20-second spots before and after the most watched TV show at the time. It was on CBS, and it was I Love Lucy. I Love Lucy was in its second season, and so they, they played these ads before and after I Love Lucy, knowing that they had a large audience at the time, and Russell Reeves ends up spending some two million dollars in a three-week media blitz leading up to the election. And that would you know, be equivalent to somewhere close to 20 million dollars today. There's one thing that the 1952 election showed us, and it showed us that TV was going to be a new powerful marketing tool in presidential politics in the near future. Election night 1952 proved that. There, it ended up being a landslide for Eisenhower. Eisenhower ended up beating Stevenson 442 electoral votes to 89. Eisenhower carried 39 states. Stevenson only carried nine. The Democrats had won five consecutive presidential elections up until this time. And now the Republicans have taken back the White House after two decades, after having gone through the Great Depression and two wars. Eisenhower's coattails were fairly long. He brought in a Republican Congress with him at the time. Um, even though it was a slight majority, it was still enough to give the Republicans control of the executive branch and the legislative branch. If you like what you learned today, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to Prez Politics, do that now. Help us get word out about Prez Politics with your friends and family. Follow us on social media.